Welcome back to another episode of A New Era of Heaviness. I'm Andrew Pecoraro from Pex Metal Picks, and today we're going to listen to 15 new songs from bands that I'm super excited about. And I know last time I said that I was going to go back down to 10 songs per episode, but almost every band I reached out to got back to me like the same day and wanted to be included. So here we are with another episode full of heavy hitters. Jumping right into it, we're going to start off with one of my favorite songs on this episode. It's called The War That Followed Me Home by Convictions. It's off the EP that they just released in May, and oh my god, guys, it's so good. In terms of breakthroughs, I would put this up there with I Let the Devil In by Currents, which is one of my all-time favorite EPs. This is a new level of heaviness and darkness that we haven't seen from Convictions before, and this more aggressive sound is really what they needed to take their music to the next level. It's not all about the heaviness, though. Just wait until the chorus comes in and you'll be blown away all over again.
Up next is the debut single from 1056 called Diazepam. For those who don't know, this is a brand new band started by Aaron Matz, the vocalist of Betraying the Martyrs. So he left Betraying the Martyrs in order to start this new band, and in his farewell statement, Aaron said that he felt like he had lost his passion for music, but found it again when he created 1056. He basically said that he had to create 1056 to remain true to himself as a musician, and implied that Betraying the Martyrs music no longer inspired him as an artist. Honestly guys, I'm liking this song by 1056 way more than I've liked Betraying the Martyrs in recent years, and I'm really excited to see what this new band can do. Not only is Aaron a powerhouse of a vocalist, but the band is also made up of super talented members from other bands like Novelists, Uneven Structure, and Kadinja. Keep your eye on these guys, I really think that they have big things in store for us. Alright guys, this next track by Aviana called Retaliation is super impressive, but you have to know a little bit of the backstory to fully understand why I'm so stoked about it. So in 2019, the vocalist of Aviana left to become the vocalist of Invent Animate. To fill the gap, Aviana recruited Joel Holmquist, who was the previous vocalist of a band called Walking with Strangers, and he became their new frontman. Aviana then released an album called Epicenter in 2019 with Joel on vocals, and that album never got enough credit for how good it was. Well then, in 2020, all of the members of Aviana, except for Joel, the brand new vocalist, decided to leave, and they quit the band to focus on other things in their lives. So after joining the band, putting out a great album, and immediately being abandoned, Joel is pretty much just left alone to figure out what he's going to do. And he could have easily quit, Aviana could have died, that could have been the end of the story, but instead he recruited a completely new set of members and started writing new music. And the reason I'm so excited about this song is because the last minute is darker, heavier, and faster than anything Aviana has ever written, 
and if this is Joel's new vision for the band, I'm all for it. Next up, we're going to listen to Antithesis by Patient67. It's off their brand new debut album that they just released, and I really like this song. You know, it has Rory from Dayseeker on it. I always love to hear him featured in songs. And the other thing that I've really been into lately are these raspy screams. And this band does it really well. Thank you. 
You might remember this next band from a previous episode when I included their huge debut single. They're called Katadin, and they're back with a three-song EP. The song we're going to listen to is called For Hate's Sake. It's my favorite uh, from the EP. The breakdowns are massive. The riffs are really thick. The grooves are a ton of fun to follow along to. It's just a really nice mix of gritty metalcore and, like, maybe beatdown? Uh, but then again, the album art looks like it would belong to a death metal band, and, you know, I just love bands that play around with different genres and see how they can mix things together, and these guys are such a young band, they have so much potential to do whatever they want with all of these different styles. I'm definitely going to be keeping my eye on them.
I was trying to find a good way to transition into this next one, but it's just too heavy. This one's called Cryogenesis, and it's off of Distance brand new EP. It also features Loki from Alpha Wolf, which is an insane combo, and I would love to see Alpha Wolf bring some of this heaviness into their future material. For those who haven't heard of Distant before, this is the perfect time to discover them. On June 11th, they released a 19-track album that includes songs from the EP they released this year, the EP they released last year, and a bunch of brand new songs that continue to tell the band's dark story. Oh, my God. 
It seems like every episode I have at least one melodic metalcore track that really resonates with me. In my opinion, this is by far the best song that Chernobyl The Secret has released so far, and they should definitely continue in this direction. This track is called In Search of Solace.
This next track is one that I've been coming back to for weeks. The cool thing is that there's two different bands on it, See You Space Cowboy and If I Die First, and they're both contributing equally. It's off their split EP that they released in May, and it's really a lot of fun to listen to. Especially in this song, the energy is so high, and it's really cool to see all the vocal combinations that they can pull off, because they're using the vocalists from both bands, so there's like three or four people singing here. I've been a big fan of See You Space Cowboy for a while now. This is the first time I've heard of If I Die First, but I'm really liking what I'm hearing. And I really like the ending of this song, where it's kind of like winding down and you think it's just going to fade away and end, but then it like blows up again and, you know, has one last burst of heaviness. And it just reminds me of what bands like Under Oath and All That Remains used to do back in the early 2000s.
This next band is called Rogue, and they released a really good EP last year. The song we're going to listen to is called Archetype. I really like the singing and the strained yells, and there's a really good breakdown in it too. The song was actually recommended by a listener of the podcast. And remember guys, if you want to hear a certain song or a you know certain band on the next episode, let me know. I'll reach out to them and see if we can get them on. I'm incredibly excited about this next song. It's by a brand new band called Of Sulfur, and the reason I'm so excited about it is because it's Ricky Hoover's new band. Now, if you don't know who Ricky Hoover is, I can't really blame you. He was the vocalist of a band called Suffocate, and they released their last album like 10 years ago, and Ricky Hoover basically quit Deathcore to become a barber and focus on, you know, other things in his life. Well... Ten years later, he's back with this new band and a new song uh, we're going to listen to, Behind the Hand of God, and he is sounding better than ever. He hasn't missed a beat. You know, he's been out of the game for ten years, but I actually think his vocals in this song are better than they've ever sounded. And he fits this new Black and Deathcore sound really well, and if you watch the music video, it's crazy because it looks like Ricky has gained 60 pounds of pure muscle. Like, I'm not even kidding you. If you look at old Suffocate music videos, he was a really thin guy. And now he looks like he's Tim Lambesis levels of just being absolutely ripped. These guys are obviously going to get a lot of attention because Ricky is, you know, back in a band. It's kind of like an OG legend, you know, if you talk to people who listen to that type of stuff back then. 
but I actually think that the hype is really well deserved. This is a really good sound from these guys, uh, and I'm you know really excited for them if they're going to keep pumping out music like this. So I'm doing something I've never done before. I'm so excited about Conviction's new EP that I'm going to play another song from it. All the songs are really good, but the two that I'm going to play in this episode are for sure my favorites. This next one we're going to listen to is called The Price of Grace, and it gives another look into the darker sound and the darker lyrics that Conviction's is working with. The breakdown at the end is huge, but it's not all about the heaviness with these guys. I said that before, and it's so true, and that I think is really what makes this EP so engaging. This track has one of my favorite choruses. I don't know, the whole thing, it just hits me really hard, and you know, once again, I can't emphasize enough how good this EP is. Silence! Let 
you leave your family behind. You embrace your demons and gave in to suicide. You deserve to survive. I'm also really excited to play this new track from Johnny Booth. It's called Crowd Control. I interviewed these guys a while ago. Their 2019 album was so good. Like, honestly, it's one of the ones from 2019 that I return to the most. I think these guys are such an undiscovered gem in the metalcore scene right now. They haven't missed a beat, you know, from that album to this new single. I love their energy, and the vocals get me so hyped up.
Here's a band called Vatican that I just discovered. They recently signed with UNFD and put out two new singles, one of them we're going to hear right now called Fractured God, and I went back through their catalog and they definitely have some solid material, but these two new singles I think are the best music that they've created so far, and they're going to have a bright future if they continue down this direction. And as always, we're finishing the episode with a super heavy track. This one is from Mental Cruelty. I've been following these guys for a long time, and they've put out some really good, really heavy deathcore, but this new album that they just released is on another level, and it's partly due to the fact that they've started bringing in some blackened deathcore elements, and it suits them really well. I've said it before, and I'll say it again. Black and deathcore is the future of deathcore, and you're going to start to see a lot more bands moving in that direction because the blackened elements introduce a new level of speed, and most importantly, it brings in a cool atmosphere that doesn't exist in most deathcore songs. Being heavy just for the sake of being heavy is great, like you have down-tempo bands, beat-down bands, stuff like that, but it's kind of one-dimensional. All you have is the heaviness. Then you listen to a song like this, and pay attention to how it develops. Yeah, there's a ton of heavy parts and breakdowns, but there's also melodic sections and symphonic elements, that all build the song up. This one's called A Hill to Die Upon, and it's off Mental Cruelty's new album that just came out.
All right, guys, that's it for this episode. Thanks for hanging out, and hopefully you discovered some new bands. I just want to say that I really appreciate the support, and I know the bands do too. A lot of them just released a new album or an EP, so there's a lot of new material for you to dive into if you like what you heard here. I'm going to start reaching out to bands for episode 8, so let me know if there's a song you want to hear, and I'll try my best to include it. See you all next time.